they really should make a filter for these things. I see people do it all the time, but I don't know how to do it. Anyway, um, <clears throat> this video, I had said the next one was going to be about coinsurance, and I've been slacking, so it's like, what, a week, two weeks overdue? Anyway, coinsurance and copays. Those are two things that you may be responsible to pay when you go to the doctor. At the time you go to the doctor. Coinsurance is basically a percentage. Excuse the noise. I've got four dogs here right now. Um, <clears throat> basically, coinsurance is a percentage that you're responsible to pay according to your medical benefits. Normally, it's 20% of a contracted rate. What that means is that if your doctor is participating, contracted, in network, whichever word you want to use, it means that they accept a lower rate than what they're actually billing. I know it's really confusing. I don't understand why they don't bill just what the contract is, but that's the way it's set up. So what it means basically is if your doctor bills $125 for an office visit, more likely than not, um, their co let's for example, say their contracted rate is $80.25 instead of $125. So that would mean that you're responsible for 20% of that $80.25, not the $125. So when I said in a previous video not to pay until your insurance processes the claim, that's why. Because unless your doctor's office knows your contracted rate or that rate is loaded into their EMR system, they're charging you based on their build rate. I'm going to walk around and let the dogs out while I talk, so they'll stop barking. So, what in essence that means, again, is that you're not responsible to pay the higher amount. And I say, more often than not, that a computer system... An EMR system, which is, stands for electronic medical records, which every office uses, is only as good as the information that was programmed into it. So if you have somebody new at the doctor's office or somebody that doesn't take their job seriously, doesn't want to learn more, doesn't want to do 100% right by the people that put their there for a paycheck, they don't understand. A lot of times it's not that they're trying to screw you. It's really that they don't understand the concept of what insurance benefits are, um, contracted rates, billable rates, participating, non-participating, in-network, out-of-network. A lot of them just don't understand. So if they tell you that you owe your co-insurance, then you ask them, okay, not, you know, when they give you an amount, ask them, is this the contracted rate or the billed rate? Because you're not responsible for the build rate. You're only responsible for the contracted percentage. And it goes hand in hand with your deductible because your coinsurance doesn't come into play until your deductible has been met. So if you have a $1,000 calendar year deductible, your benefits won't kick in until that $1,000 is met. And again, that $1,000 is contracted, not billable. So, if coinsurance is a factor, it'll come into play after your deductible has been met for the year. And then, oh, look, you can't hear it yet, but now my pig has come to play. So, I'm going to let her in. What that means is that once your deductible is met, then your coinsurance comes into play. And your coinsurance, when it comes into play, it's only that, that percentage, and like I said, normally it's 20%, but with a lot of the healthcare market plans or Obamacare plans or ACA, whatever you want to call it, some of those sure do have higher coinsurance rates, but the norm, quote-unquote norm, is 20%. Now, copay, on the other hand, is also an amount that you're responsible to pay, but it's a fixed amount. Every time you go to the doctor, it doesn't change. There are some plans out there that for the first four or five visits of the year, you have a zero copay and then you, you, know, you, you don't owe anything. And then you have a set amount for the rest of the year. 
there are um, other plans, most plans these days, that if you're going in for a physical, you don't have a copay. Those most um, preventative services, which your annual physicals are considered to be preventative, those are covered at 100%. So you don't, and that's regardless of your copay, you don't owe a copay 90% of the time for preventative services. There are instances, which I will get into in the future, it's an idea that just popped in my head, um, talking more about the benefits. This part, these first few about understanding your EOBs and your deductible, your coinsurance, your copay, those are just basic high level, not detailed, high level information for you so that hopefully maybe you can start saving some money or not paying as much as you were or just understanding in general. Um, your specialist copay, if you have to go to a cardiologist or an orthopedist or a pulmonologist or any of the, the specialists, is usually higher than your primary care or PCP copay. Um, again, it's a fixed amount do every time you see the doctor and that doesn't change you know so if they ask you for your copay or you tell you they say copays are due you know when you come in it's true unless you're going in for an annual physical and again the more you know about your benefits the better and that would be listed the best thing you can do is create yourself an online profile with your insurance. And that, ex that also gives you a full breakdown of your benefits, would tell you how much your copay is, what it does or does not apply to. And that goes the same for your deductible and or your co-insurance. Again, if you have any questions, if you think of a topic that you'd like to know more about, let me know and I will add it to the menu. Have a great day.